Okay, so let's play a bit of the song and see what we got going on. Right, so the bass guitar that's been selected for this is the Salmon Tones, Loki Bass 2. Um, this can sometimes work nice. So the thing, the way that I do it with bass is I kind of flip through, or the way that I would suggest it is to have different uh, bass VSTs. And when you, at the very beginning, flip through each VST and see what gels with the guitars from the start, see what gives the best tone, um, what suits the song and then roll with that and then refine it as you go. So this is um, the chunky wall Yeah, I don't think there's anything that I've changed here um, boop, 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 boop. I think this is all the same Yeah That's pretty standard Okay, so let's maybe listen to the bar the the bass. <laughs> let's listen to the bass isolated and see what that um, what that sounds like. So yeah, it has a lot of low end and it sounds very clean, not too harsh in the upper spectrum. Um, so I try to get the bass to sound like as fat as possible and also clean at the same time, which is not always easy. Um, but this one doesn't need a lot because the tone from the start is pretty good. So I just kind of do some cleaning up uh, just before it goes to the bus. So let's actually do this. Let's um, switch all of this off. And then let's go back to the channel and see what this sounds like without. See, see, see. In like these areas, there's a lot of frequencies that can be cleaned up and also up here in the mid range, there's a lot that can be cleaned up uh, because it's very muffled straight out of the box. And then getting that to sit with the guitars doesn't work very well. So you, I'll kind of solo these with it. When you, the whole idea that I try to do is is to get the bass to sort of reinforce the low end of the guitar, so to make the guitar sound fatter, and it also has to poke through the guitar, so it's not like sitting below them, you know. Um, it has to make the guitar sound more aggressive and more upfront and give it like fullness. That's at least the general idea of what I try to do. So let's maybe take a look at this. So so a high pass filter at 70, which is giving the kick preference essentially um, because it's like a lot of like fast kick patterns and I want the kick to be more dominant than the bass information. So then I um, high pass the bass quite high at 70 and then I just roll it off, can't pull this sort of down to roll this. So you see that information that's coming up there, I just want to roll it off so that that kind of gets softly taken out and then kind of taking out some low mids. So I'll switch these two off. So it tightens the low end up a lot and then just dipping out more sort of around the fundamentals of the snare so that the snare doesn't get like overwhelmed with these frequencies. Let's maybe just like 
bring the drums in and see how that works in context and so you might not be able to see everything on the screen but I'm just activating the drums and the sense for the drums just so we have just want to make sure everything's activated yep I'm just going to switch this um, echo sample if it can be a bit much sometimes. So I'm going to switch this off here and then we see what the snare does with the switched off. You see how all that information like comes to the front of the speaker, it sort of like sits on top of everything. You can still hear the snare but it's like a lot of mud being introduced. So on. So if you kind of listen to the speaker, it's like the it's like this information is being pushed up here. And then when you hear the EQ activated, it's like the bass gets centered. All that information gets centered nicely and it doesn't have all this stuff sort of sitting up here. If I have headphones, it's the only way I can explain it. But let's it's off now. So essentially what that does is it, it for me it focused the bass down the center and not like everywhere in the in the stereo field and then up here there was like some this can also be harsh in bass this sort of upper mid-range area and this was just to kind of brighten it up overall because all of these moves made it a bit dull. Just sort of lifted it up a bit so it's a bit more present. So yeah, let's um, take a look at the bus and see what we got going on there. All right. So getting the level of the guitar, the bass and the guitars can be can be sort of tricky. I'm always undecided of what level I want it to be, but you'll kind of hear the lower mids of the bass when they're too much. Kind of gets a bit fatiguing. But let's take a look. So first thing I did, and remember that this is all in context. This is all like listening and kind of hearing and experimenting and seeing what sounds cool and what doesn't. Um, so first thing I did is just add some drive on the virtual channel on the Brit 4KE just for some analog feel and it does push the mids a bit most of the lower mids and then I just boosted at 8k again again this is like a little bit of brightness um, and then I activated the um, attenuation on the on the on the 10k frequency up here with this tube setting so when you have you can either attenuate 20k 10k 5k or 3k and when you switch this it attenuates that frequency spectrum um, and you can kind of put this on if something's sounding a bit dull this gives it like a very soft boost that doesn't sound too harsh and then what i do is um i'll switch this off this is interesting is that i boost like 10 dBs of 16k and it kind of brightens the bass up so that it pokes through a bit more you can try that so I'll switch it off see how it like opens up the bass just from this move and this move it kind of just opens the bass up and takes sort of a blanket off of it so that it's a bit more snappier sounding There is a volume increase, sure, um, but you can hear the overtones are more lively. And these are things that you can do to just experiment. Like 
um, in every mix um, some mixes don't go as well as others um, some don't sound as good as others and it's all about experimentation and it also it's song dependent it's tempo dependent um, and all of these moves are just experimenting figuring out what what sounds cool and then rolling with it and sometimes I'll go back and maybe undo a move that I made because it's causing problems with the drum whatever the case may be but just take a plug-in you know whatever it is as long as it makes sense within terms of what you're mixing but even if it's just this you know um, take it throw it on and just look and say oh let's see what 5k does See, like that brings, you know, it's maybe not the frequency spectrum you want to be boosting, but it could work in 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 context with everything else. And if it sounds cool, then roll with it. That's the way I approach it. Is just, you know, take a plugin, throw it on, tweak it, see what it does, and then you're going to learn, you know, and then you know, ah, okay, this plugin has this characteristic. Um, this plugin does this, or this one does that, you know. And then when you're in another mix situation, you'll be like, oh, okay, I know what that plugin does and this is kind of what I'm needing. So let me go back to that um, that plugin and see if it'll work in this, in this context and then just start seeing what it sounds like. So then um, some compression. This is quite a cool compressor, it's FG401. Um, so I have it on circuit two. Um, and then I just have a preset so I usually roll with the preset because these presets are usually pretty good in terms of how they dialed in and then what you can do is play with the attack and release and kind of take a listen to what it does okay, you see when I change that to fast it's kind of like the bass is more pushed back And then slow the bass is more pushed forward and let's take the release S same thing really so yeah play with the settings and, and see what it does in to the to the source tone and if you like it roll with it and you know just as long as it sounds good so this is the first bit of processing that i did on the bass and all these sort of analog plugins add something to the source tone, it gives it a more analog, realistic feel. So the more you add these up, the more you're going to get color um, out of the source tone. Um, this is another cool trick that I recently learned that I'll quickly show, where you can add sort of like some oh I don't know like mid-range harmonics to the bass and kind of thicken it up so what you can do is you can take the bass right and then you can add one of these the London or the Hollywood figure out which one you like I'm just choosing this for the sake of the video and then you have it on the preamp setting and then you pull the saturation all the way up so it will sound very distorted okay so <laughs> heavily heavily distorted right um, but then you take the mix knob and you just blend it in so it adds a little bit of saturation and thickness to the bass that didn't have before so I'll switch it off and then on See how the bass just got a little bit more full then all these micro sort of moves make up a huge difference so you can kind of play with the mix and see where it sits nice yeah and I'll just leave that on and we'll roll with it so that's a cool move and you can also do this on vocals so if you have a really nice vocal recording in your mix and it's and it's it's a decent source tone what you can do is is take the hollywood or the this the london throw it on at the end of your vocal chain 
boost the saturation and then it's going to distort and then mix it up to about 30 percent and you'll hear how the vocal gets like this amazing harmonic it's a really really cool trick um so you can try that out you can do it on any try it on any instrument doesn't matter what it is um this fucking microphone is eh? shit try it on any, any instrument that you have and just play around with it um so essentially what you're doing is just sound design um then okay so this basically i have the kick side chained to the low end here so how i do this is i have this in um expert mode and then i have the free um such ext i actually don't know what this stands for to be fairly honest with you i haven't gone that geeky into this but um, I have it set to free in this EXT mode and then compress. And then basically I have this um, frequency spectrum selected from 47, right? So that any frequency um, below 47, from 47 and below, compresses the low end of the bass. So it's side chain to the, the kick, a side chain to it. So that as the kick hits, the low end of the bass compresses and then it gets this sort of pumpy kind of feel to it that gives it a bit more energy so i will uh let me find the kick that is side chained and i'll play it and i'll kind of flick it on and off and we'll see what we It's very subtle, but there's a lot of um, like sort of cleaning up that happens when you side chain the kick to this low end of the bass, um, and it gives it a really um, more sort of dynamic, punchy kind of feel. And when you have all the other instruments um, playing, you'll get a much more controlled and it's very hard to describe, but very punchy low end. So that's a cool trick. Um, and then I just am controlling some stuff in the top, uh, in the upper mids, just cause it gets a bit out of control. Then we have some more cleaning up. This is all in context. So let's. Okay, you hear when I switch this off, how that mid range muddiness just comes up to the front. So this is just cleaning it up and then cleaning up a little bit. It was a little bit too pokey at 112. So you can also see it on the frequency spectrum when these frequencies are too much. You can see them going out of control. And with Pro-Q3, it will actually tell you what frequencies are um, not playing nice. So let's take a look at that. So there it's telling me that 96 is a little bit out of control. Then what you can do is if it's telling you that, you can just bring it down a bit, you know, to control it. And um, you want to be careful with this not to rely on it um, for giving you information that you actually use your ears. But what you can do is like where it's telling you that it's out of control, you can bring it down and then toggle it on and off and kind of use your ears to hear if it made a good difference. But that's also a way that can assist you in figuring out, you know, what's not playing nice. But you can see it's out of control here. So I'll actually leave it there. These are just ugly frequencies that I don't think are necessary in a bass. Again, this 3K region is like the region that our ears are super sensitive to, like um, ambulance, babies crying, you know, 
um, our ears are very sensitive to that uh, sort of alarming kind of frequency range. Then I have a low pass at 7000, just taking off any high end that's not needed in the base. Um, then just more mid-range shaping because I felt it was too much here. kind of just tightens it up, like just kind of moves those frequencies a little bit more out of the way. So you can kind of hear that sort of low mid muddiness that sort of rises to the surface. And then this shape over here just kind of rolls it off nicely so you can kind of play with that over here and just see what works you know what sounds best just sh pointing at the fucking screen um it just shaves it off here so it gives it like a nice rounded off sort of cleanup and then more controlling here on the low end it was just also bouncing up a bit too much and then on the upper um, mid spectrum just controlling stuff and then a limiter just to pin everything down um, I have it on the modern mode So it's doing minor, like minus 0 0.4. It's just kind of taming those little peaks <clears throat> so that when it hits the compressor on the master bus and all that stuff, that all that stuff is nice and controlled. So um, yeah, let's just take a look before. And after yeah I mean the bass could pop a bit more but um, it's nice and cleaned up and sounds very tight and sits very nicely down the center then um, Let's just do a trick on the fly. So a cool trick that I like to do to get the bass to kind of have a more stereo effect and kind of make the mix sound a bit more full is just to add an effects track. Um, call it bass stereo. Have I spelled that right? Oh, fuck knows. And then we just throw a reverb on it, so I like this uh, lustrous plates, I think it's called. Okay, cool. So what we're going to do here um, on this bass stereo track, we're just going to put an EQ before the reverb to clean up any low muddiness that we don't need in the reverb. So I set it to about 400, up it into 7000. And then we put a de -esser after the reverb just to push it back so that the reverb's not so upfront and it just kind of pushes it a bit back. Okay, then we're going to take the bass and we're going to send it to the effects. Uh, where is it? Drum crash, snare verb, app, and guitar. Ah right in front of my face okay so let's play this you see how that the SO pushes it back okay so I just want a bit of this it's like a parallel effect more than anything and let's you see how the bass just subtly gets a bit of width on it. You can just put it like 
some with it. Yeah, that's a cool trick just to get some stereo width on that bass and give it that wider feel. So yeah, I mean, that pretty much sums it up. Let's take a listen. Yeah, I mean this this mix sounds good. It's still a little bit pokey here and there. Um, I wouldn't call it a perfect mix, but it's definitely um, on a professional standing, and it sounds pretty good. It does need some tweaks. So that's pretty much it for bass. Um, it can be very simple, but you have to get the s source tone sounding really good right at the beginning of the mix before you do any heavy lifting at the end so that everything sounds nice and clean as you go into the um, into the master bus and your as you go into your instrumental bus you want to clean everything up really nicely and then start doing these big moves after the, sm the smaller moves are done to get all the source tones to sound really good like doing the stuff on the um, for example the bass here doing the stuff here on the channel you know cleaning it up first and then going into the bus and saying, okay, what can we do here, you know, to make the sound a bit more, a bit better. And bear in mind, when I'm cleaning this up over here, I don't have any of this activated because this adds a lot of, if, you, if your stuff is sounding harsh from the beginning, all of this stuff is going to affect that, you know, all of this stuff. So you don't want to mix into this right from the beginning. That's the way I do it. I don't have this on. I don't have any of this on. I first get all the uh, selection of the drums that I want to use and um, the bass that I want to use, guitar amps um, that are that I want to use. You know, first do kind of select all of this stuff, and then do I um, or select that stuff, do the cleaning up, and then I start making these bigger moves. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, pretty short video, or well, not too short. Um, if you want to subscribe, do so. If you want to leave a comment and interact with the video, do that, it's always cool. And we'll see you in the next one.